We go under the microscope with the local brains behind what's causing the die-offs of gray whales in the Arctic. There are stranded whales dying, being washed up on the beaches of the Pacific, from Mexico all the way up to the Arctic. Some of the research is happening at the University of Maryland Center for Environmental Science in Solomons, where the Patuxent River meets the bay. Over the last 35 years, the size of these amphipods has declined. Anthropods are these shrimp-like creatures on the bottom of the ocean floor that is the main food for gray whales. It goes down and it feeds and it gets a big chunk of mud tips itself on the side, opens its mouth, takes up some mud, rises to the surface, uses its tongue to push against the top of its mouth, and out goes the mud and in goes the amphipods. Dr. Grebmeyer has visited the waterways near Alaska for more than 30 years to study the animals that live in the sediment. Her work was recently published in the journal Science. When I was a graduate student way back decades ago, there were like 10,000 of them in a meter squared. But in the last uh, decade then, uh, we've been seeing a decline, and that's what our observing system has found, that the, the space, the patch, has gotten smaller. What we showed in this paper is that the amphipod, the patch of which they grow in, is smaller. Brian Marks is the graduate research assistant who is analyzing a possible change in the quality of the food, not just the quantity. I'm going to take these amphipods, they're going to be dried up and ground into a powder, and that powder is going to be formed into a little pellet that's going to go in this machine. With some math, he can then figure out how many calories are in a small area on the bottom of the seafloor. There might be a decline in the amount of calories or energy available uh, because of shrinking body size, um, also a decline in their food quality as well. It's a slow process, but the team is looking at the collections brought back in these buckets. Right here we have muscle, a muscle, and um, this is a beard attached to it. I have to go through all of these. These are all little worms stuck inside. Since Jackie's been doing this work for so long, you can get like a picture of all of the changes that have happened. On the surface, you can see the ice that is broken up. Dr. Grebmeyer's husband, Dr. Lee Cooper, is also traveling and working on the research. We go to specific locations every year. We sample four times at the same place, so that way we can statistically say, this is how much these organisms weigh, these are the species, and do a statistically valid um, d description of the site. The study says the fluctuating stocks of the shrimp-like creature are likely to have caused three major die-offs in the eastern North Pacific gray whale population since the 1980s. Dr. Grebmeyer says the most recent die-off began in 2019. Each one has reduced the gray whale population by up to 25 percent over just a few years. She says what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. How does that information that you're learning in the Arctic benefit us here on the bay? What relates to the, uh, the bay is the fact that we're having a lot of stresses that we have in the bay, warming water, we have uh, clam populations or changes in seagrass in the bay, uh, we have fisheries in the bay. These are being impacted by changes we're seeing in the Arctic. And the research continues. Dr. Grebmeyer has two more Arctic cruises scheduled for next year. For Chesapeake Bay Media's Big Bulletin, I'm Cheryl Costello.